One aspect that makes Tayo such a great character is how true he is when it comes to being Mutsumi's husband. From all that we have seen so far, his love for Mutsumi is clearly unbreakable, but that still isn't going to stop other characters from trying to steal him. Naturally, it wouldn't be much of a challenge if they weren't from the spy world, and unfortunately, we got the introduction of one of the craziest ones in the batch. So this week's episode of Mission Yozakura Family dealt with a whole lot of hacking. As far as content coverage goes, chapters 11 and 15 were adapted entirely with a good amount of additions and changes within the content to keep on giving that fresh vision for the scenarios. It also helps that these additions manage to connect the chapters, allowing a form of consistency within the episode and overall transitioning quite smoothly into each other. Of course, the most important detail I'm sure flew over many anime only's heads, but we'll be getting back to that shortly. Now as for the first half of the episode, we continue our new character introductions with Ayaka Kurisaki, or as Mutsumi nicknamed her, the Manhunter. It goes without saying that she is crazy obsessive with those she sets her eyes on, and arguably is on the same level as Kyo Ichiro who has allowed this whole hacking thing to happen in the first place. Now one thing to know is that the first two minutes of the episode was all anime original and served as the connection between chapters 11 and 15. Ayaka's original intro starts with her taking down some gangsters and then finding a bounty on Tayo. The anime changed that and instead gave her a fresh start as she hacked into the Yozakura database which all also alerted Shion. Shion's chapter with the game is all of chapter 11, so you can see how they managed to tie these two together, and as always, it was a very clever idea put together in order to get all content done all at one time. Additionally, Ayaka originally attacks Tayo at school while at lunch with Mutsumi, but the anime took it to where they were attacked on their way. It's a contrast between her immediately being introduced in her school infiltration uniform and her usual black suit attire. I do want to point out that the small action bits we got in the alleyway had some nice direction with it. The initial clash between the two was portrayed a whole lot better in the anime, and even Ayaka spreading her needles around was just all in all very cool. I want to expect this level of quality where it can be reasonably applied within future content, but as always, we will get there when we get there. Now Ayaka is quickly turned down, but there is nothing more feared than a person who can't handle rejection, and what is a school day for Taya without it being borderline hellish all day long? The man is constantly having to dodge and catch needles, and all in all is the exact type of shenanigans you would expect from this kind of series. It got to the point where the class got caught up in the mess on top of another assassin trying to get his revenge on Ayaka from earlier in the episode. And once Mutsumi almost got hit by the bullet, Tayo knew he had to shut it down immediately. The result? Ayaka falling for Mutsumi after they had a little bonding about how much they care for the same man in their own ways. Being honest, you're not gonna be able to make much sense about how Ayaka's brain works, but this won't be the last time we see her either. In fact, what I can say is that she is a character that lasts the entire series, even when looking at recent events within the manga, so expect her to pop up from time to time. Now I briefly want to touch on one of the most important details in this first half of the episode, and that is the symbol on Tayo's bounty and the name Popo Pipo. Now looking back at that interview once again by the VAs, there are small details that play into foreshadowing and this is one of those details. The leader of this company is responsible for the incident in chapters 5 through 8, so it makes me wonder if they still have any plans to move that content up to now. Granted, the anime could have easily been keeping consistent with the detail and ensuring that they don't remove that foreshadowing, but I am curious to see what they may try to do as it is mentioned in the future. The leader of that company is another character that is introduced at the end of volume 2 and continues into volume 3. I can tell you now that just just by looking at the title of the next episode, we are moving into Volume 3, so whether or not they scrap it all together is up in the air, but I am leaning into a most likely not mindset. I believe they'll find some way to connect both the character's introduction and the content in chapters 5 through 8 as we move into more intense content on the horizons, but it's hard to fully say given the surprises within the adaptation, so I will merely wait and see. As for the second half of the episode, Chapter 11 is pretty much all Shion and Taiyo bonding. We saw how Tayo and Shinzo came to be closer on their mission, and this time, we're gaming for the sake of saving lives. Shion is nowhere near physically strong as the majority of the family, but the one thing that makes up for that is her technological prowess. Her ability to hack and program is how she fights, but even that has its spin in which she converts her hacks into games. She clears the game, she completes the objective for said hack, and we see her and Tayo play a version of Super Mario Bros and another type in order to stop more 
multiple incidents. The anime did change the major issue at hand a bit, with the manga version stopping a missile attack on the parliament building, but the anime went with stopping these clearly violent protesters from crashing into a power plant. This change was most likely due to it including Ayaka towards the end, which also was anime only. She was not present in chapter 11 at all, but by adding some more enemies to fight, they allowed her to sneak on in, coming full circle from the beginning of the episode, and is overall a win-win situation. It was pretty cool to see how the ending for this course served as the blueprint for how the game would look. Given its pixel art, it's very much not a bad idea to simply improve upon it, and all things considered, the game itself moved quite nicely. Even with all the changes, the anime stayed pretty faithful to the overall development with Tayo bonding with his sister-in-law. The cherry on top, Ayaka getting locked out of the database she shouldn't have been inside of in the first place. Overall, a much lighter load of discussion with this week's episode, but still continuing to lay out that groundwork for the series. However, I do want to say that next week is when things are looking to ramp up and which could be a steady direction for the foreseeable future. As mentioned by the director, the anime is aiming to focus on the overall wider narrative, and next week is kicking off one of the first major steps in that wider direction. I want to say that for the next 3-5 to five episodes in that range, things are about to get a bit more action heavy, and overall, a tone shift is about to take place when it comes to the more heavier moments within the series. So for those who have been still enjoying the content, but have been waiting to see the direction that the story is truly taking off in, make sure to tune in next week because we for sure will have a lot to talk about. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna do it for me. Overall, a nice two chapter adaptation with some cool additions and adjustments, and I'm greatly looking forward to next week as we finally are going to be able to see just how much bigger this narrative can get. As always, thank you for watching, and by all means, let me know your thoughts about the episode in the comment section down below. Stay safe out there, and I will see you all next Sunday for episode 7.